Have you been? This is more of an encouragement for you out there practicing at home. You might be asking, doubting, wondering, is it possible to attain higher stages even if you do it at home? And may be lucky enough to attend a workshop here and there, class here and there once or twice per week, and then do online classes. But most of the technique, you apply yourself at home. Yes, it is. Yeah. When I was starting, I didn't have the resources, but I was so lucky to have the opportunity to be working in the fitness industry, and part of it yeah, is to learn yoga. But back then, it was mostly learning, really. And I'm so ever grateful for my teachers, my colleagues, you know, for uh, the encouragement, the inspiration. And my teacher was so, uh, I'd say, generous. Yeah. He was strict. But, you know, it comes from the willingness to share. And bless him, although I didn't have the chance to spend more time with him because he passed too soon, but the foundation yeah, he ingrained in us yeah, stayed. And what is that foundation? It's not the complex asana, really. It's not the, the headstand. It's not the handstand. Yeah although he was so yeah, inspiring. And back then, I, I wasn't really aiming to attain that level because I started so low. I didn't know about yoga at all. But what he taught us is to breathe. Yes. To breathe through the practice. It's so important. That's one huge step you know, to attaining higher stages. Because you know what? It's really in the breath. Yeah. The divine consciousness, a pure reality, the soul, the essence of God is in the breath. Yeah. And then just by knowing how to breathe and move through your motions, yeah, you're already practicing higher stages, really. Yeah, because as you breathe, and then the mind gets involved in the breathing process, yeah, you awaken centers there, your yeah, silent centers, which are normally <laughs> dormant, yeah? because breath is given to us, inhaling, exhaling. And then once you learn how to attain the higher potentials of the breath, for example, if you lift your spine, it's inhalation, right? Yeah. But in a normal situation, we don't think about it. But when you allow the breath to lead you there, it becomes so nourishing. Yeah. So when you're doing, for example, um, your breathing exercises, the yeah, pranayama, yeah. Even if you just if you don't do the retention, yeah. So for example, you're doing your natural breath, inhaling, and then allow your brain to get involved in the process of lifting yeah, the sensations of the breath up, and you feel the suspension of your whole body. Yeah, it's huge already. Uh, you're nourishing your body. You're nourishing your organs more than and beyond your autonomic functions. Yeah. And therefore, when I teach my students, yeah, it's mostly the breath. Yeah. So you always hear me say how to breathe through it. Inhale as you do this and exhale as you do that. Yeah, because when you do that over and over again, it's really discipline. Training the breath is like training how to operate the machine until it becomes so organic that you remember breathing or you do the breathing technique, the breathing pattern without you thinking about it. It's at the back of your head. It's like knowing your name. Yeah. It's like an impulse. Yeah a reaction to a certain situation without you thinking how to react on that particular situation. Right. And then yoga techniques, yeah, especially the flow. Yeah, so if you're doing online classes, so I suggest learn the flow first, yeah, flowing through it, because flowing is a good way for you to coordinate your body and the breath. Right. And after establishing the asana, that's a many asana discipline, but for me, yeah, if you are a beginner and if you have the strength, if you are, are given the, the ability to flow and move the body in various directions, the spine we all are, yeah, then start with the flow. 
maybe Surya Namaskar, you know, once per day. You, know, you can do that for like 10 minutes. And after that, progress to other types of flow. All right. Before, yeah, you gain stability, really. Mobility is important. All right. So after establishing yourself in the asana, take time to hold the body still in a sitting position like this, for example. Yeah. And then mind the breath. All right. So this now when the body is still, and then we breathe mindfully, that's mudra already. Yeah, channeling the energy. And then there are various techniques there. Yeah, so a safe uh, mudra that everyone can practice is actually just lifting your optic nerves up. Yeah, like you're suspending your optical muscles up, yeah, magnetizing the optic nerves. And then exhale. So natural breath. Right. So don't rush. Natural breath. After establishing your breath as you flow in the asana, now establish your breath as you hold the body still, now channeling the energy. And there are yeah, techniques, the eyebrows, the internal gazing, yeah, visualization, yeah, and then feeling the expansive awareness across your forehead, yeah, the lingam, and externally. And exhale back to the heart. Right. You can also practice what? Yeah, diaphragmatic breathing. Yeah. So the last tutorial I talked about the diaphragmatic breathing. You might do it lying down or sitting. As you inspire the breath in, allow the sensation to start from the core. Like you're breathing from the tail to the brain. Yeah, the complete yogic breath. And on the exhalation, soften. You may want to take a look at that lesson I've given about the complete yogic breath so you can appreciate the technique. And after yeah, establishing, establishing your breath when your body is still, you know, all you need to do is actually relax. Lie down in the Shavasana. Right? Cover your body. It's important to keep the warmth of the energy. Yeah, especially if the weather is cold. Even if the weather is warm, I suggest you cover the body because you want to yeah, confine the energy. All right. And then just allow the, the rest of you to relax. And then when you are recovering the Shavasana, yeah, you might gently hum the vocal cords. So that's what I do. Yeah, just to um, still the mind. Yeah. So I can attain a single uh, point of attention. Um, we're lying down. Yes, you can do this. Um, until you lose it, yeah. So after uh, a minute or two of gently humming the arm, your brain will go to this realm of suspension, like your mental faculties dissolve, yeah. And then you just drift. Yeah. If you fall asleep, just be, All right? So the brain, when the brain falls asleep from that state of mindfulness and it goes down to unconsciousness really inside of you yeah you are awakening and an opening the dormant center stem and the shishumna nadi opens the middle channel and then resting or sleeping from that state yeah is so healing yeah for your nervous system yep if you are not doing the shavasana you can keep your sitting posture you may do your chanting yeah. yeah, the voice sound is a good equalizer. All right, and after that, you say your grace, you say your thanks, and that's uh, um, expressed through maybe this arms left, exhale, or you may do the yeah, yeah, prana mudra, breathing in, open, and exhale, come back. Good. So to recap, establish the breath in the asana or flow. 
establish the breath and stillness by doing what? Mindful breathing, or you might do your pranayama, but don't rush. Yeah. Establish your breath yeah, when you relax. And you can effectively do that by equalizing yeah, the pathway. You might do humming, or you can do it sitting and then chanting. And after that, share. Yeah. So when you allow your energy, your intention yeah, to go to places, yeah, even if you don't know where it goes, it goes to places where it's needed, yeah, the energy, and then you share, yeah, and you become an inspiration. Yeah. And to think about the, the uh, spiritual side of it, yeah, the welfare and the goodness of the many, yeah, then you become your teacher yourself. Yeah? So it's a, another uh, point of inspiration that every time you go back to your mat and after you harness your energy, you can share them, yeah, even if you just set your attention out there, it's so healing. Yeah, and the following day, you do it again. The following day, and the day after, yeah, until it becomes part of you. Right. So time, yeah, 30 minutes, yeah. if you have the time, an hour there. Yeah. And then just allotting or just planning your sequence. That's why online classes are very helpful because your teachers already you know, prepared it for you. All you have to do is to follow. And then when you follow the teacher, yeah, over and over again. Just do it over and over again. Yeah, You will remember even the voice of your teacher will get stuck in you that when you do it alone, yeah, so you will remember the instructions inside. Yeah, so really, yeah, don't lose, I say, motivation. So keep the fire. That's the Agni, the spiritual fire. And then, yes, yeah, one day y you'll, you, you'll be pleasantly surprised that yeah, you are already becoming more sensitive of the things and the subtle elements you never thought were there before. Good. Thank you and really good luck to you. And I'll catch you in the next video. Namaste. Right.